Our first storyteller has lived in Valdez for over 20 years, working primarily as a charter boat captain. His sailboat is the Raven, and that is where his story is set tonight. Please welcome to stage Bill Copeland with a story we call Providence. This is a prop. I got up four times last night to write this word down, the beginning word, the most important word in terms of the whole story, because I kept forgetting it. So I remembered it. It's providence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> providence is, uh, I'm going to relate a tale that actually happened with friends on one of the charter trips with, with the Raven, my sailboat. We were in a cove. It was beautiful. It was close. It was calm. We anchored up. It was raining lightly. My guests were out in the cockpit. I was down below, but the companionway hatch was open, so I could hear chatter going on up there. Then it was all peaceful, it was all nice. Then I heard somebody say, Bill, you should come up here. So I started going up the ladder, companionway ladder. I got to the dashboard part and underneath the, the, the Dodger. Everybody knows what a Dodger is, right? And <clears throat> here was a hummingbird, a little rufous hummingbird, a female, had flown in, in between the chattering adults out here, all the way in and landed on top of my hat. Not, I didn't have it on, but uh, it was just down there in, in the dash part of the boat. And in response to Bill, he should come up here. I crept up the companionway ladder until my eyes come out to where I could see where they were looking. And here was this most darling little hummingbird with a black eye looking right at me. And she went, Pss. that's it, just one little Pss. And without thinking, I went up another step gradually went towards her with my hands. She didn't move, didn't flinch. Everybody else, the guests, are quiet. Everything is suspended. It was like, hold, hold your breath time. As my hands moved towards the hummingbird, I encircled its body with my hand, my fingers. I didn't squeeze it. I just encircled it so it was in this little cage right, right there. And I noticed at that point she had a blueberry bud that had been half developed. And she stuck her beak in it thinking it was something still to get nectar out of. but there wasn't anything. And she pulled out and she had this ring around her beak, closing her beak off. And of course, it, it would only take a day or two or less for that bird to perish because it can't feed itself. So the, the what do I want to say? The tension grew when you, when you saw that. Anyway, the hand, went over and she just sat right there with a little beak sticking out, just as calm as could be. My other hand very slowly pulled the undeveloped bud off her beak and moved my hands back. Everybody else is still still. She looks at me 
head and goes flew back up in the direction between the people and disappeared. Now is that what was that word again? <laughs> Providence. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.